People often ask us where my wife Veronica is from and what it's like there. As much as I try to explain it, I never can quite do it justice. So this last trip, I thought I'd bring you along with me and show you. The small city of La Santísima Trinidad is located in the Amazon jungle of Bolivia, the only landlocked country in South America, making it one of the poorest and most third world countries in the continent. The people here suffer from lack of nutrition, bad water, and constant heat, but are still some of the most humble and loving people I've ever met. I have a theory that their happiness is directly tied to the fact that their food they make is absolutely delicious. Fried plantains, saltenas, empanadas, and yuca frita are just a few things that make a Bolivian meal so amazing. Not to mention the gigantic variety of tropical fresh fruits and juices. A couple notable features of this city include its tropical main plaza, once home to a population of friendly sloths, and its colonnaded streets that are bordered with open drains, cunetas, surrounding every block of buildings. These cunetas can get pretty nasty, but they do play a vital role in avoiding flooding within the city when there's rain. And trust me, it definitely knows how to rain in Trinidad. All this water drains to the local river, where all sorts of crazy animal life can be found. Everything from alligators and really weird looking birds to capiwara. Now, if you've never seen a capiwara, it's kind of like those rodent beasts in the fire swamp sequence of The Princess Bride. Wesley, what about the RUSs? Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. If you happen to be staying by the water, which is very likely seeing that Trinidad is surrounded by lagoons and Amazon tributaries, you'll hear all sorts of crazy noises at night. Like bizarre, unworldly animal sounds that leave you guessing what's really out there. This is the house where Veronica grew up. Now, it wasn't always this nice. Before she was 15 years old, she lived in a mud hut, where she lived with her direct and extended family of 19 people. With her direct family, they slept seven people in one room with three beds. They eventually built this house and things got much better for them. However, even right before she came to live in the US, Veronica never enjoyed the luxury of having a dishwasher, a washing machine, dryer, heating, air conditioning, or even warm running water. Actually, even flushing the toilet was done manually with a bucket of water. Trinidad is also known as the city of motorcycles, that being the preferred mode of transportation there. Throughout the day and night, the buzz and roar of motorcycles is everywhere. Actually, one of Veronica's favorite weekend pastimes was doing rounds around and around the plaza at night. Don't ask me how this could be entertaining, but maybe for a lack of anything better to do. Actually, when visiting, I used to love riding around on Veronica's old motorcycle myself. That is, until I crashed into a cuneta. As far as activities go, don't expect to hit up a movie theater or do anything conventional. But don't worry, there are plenty of adventurous things to do and see in and around the city. For example, go piranha fishing, alligator hunting, or for a real adrenaline rush, go motorboat boarding on the same river you were fishing and hunting. If you ever make it to Trinidad, you'll see that the majority of people really have next to nothing in ways of temporal possessions, but still seem to live happy and for the most part fulfilled lives. Over the past five years, I've learned that while in Trinidad, it's important for me to slow down and enjoy the simple things. The natural beauty, the culture, and the Beniano pace of living. It's been a reminder to laugh at myself, to enjoy moments that otherwise might go unnoticed in the bustle of everyday life, and to enjoy passing time with others just to simply be together. I still have so much to learn from this place and the people in Trinidad, but for now, call it home, call it my refiner's fire, but for those very reasons, for us, it's a little piece of unassuming paradise.
Amigos